We are back doing this vlog in which I'm documenting I'm actually progressing as a professional golfer. Now over the last couple of weeks I've tried like daily vlogs and stuff but I've decided to get back to this, back to the core um, and that's ultimately what I want the channel to be about is progressing as a golfer and then giving back. So hopefully you can you know pick something up from it and, and learn along the way as well. So I'm just about to train, uh, I've got a pool session today which is mostly, <laughs> mostly, which is mostly going to be based around um, just pull ups pools um, and then other like just all pool variations on a bar which is as obviously I can't really access a lot at the moment but just to explain what I was doing with the putter there inside so that was a drill that I learned from Leon so what you do is you put an alignment stick in the end of your putter or somewhere on the putter head you then anchor it into the sternum and from there you just like rotate and just make sure that you match the face or the club head with the sternum and what that does is takes away like individual hand movement and just gets the putter kind of like releasing with the body and yeah to full swing i'm actually going to go into a bit more detail tomorrow um, in front of the camera um, but it's feeling a lot better so yeah let's get into detail that tomorrow but first is hit this pool session get the club going this way, otherwise you can't find the ball. So what we want to see is you almost have to rotate. When hitting pitch shots, the other changes are that you're not trying to get shaft lean. You're not trying to um, create a, a steeper angle of attack. You're trying to pretty much shallow it out and get it pretty much on the level, maybe like one, two degrees down um, with the club head in line with the shaft so you can actually use the bounce properly. Now you may think that taking it back shut almost encourages you to then um, become slightly more steep and get the, the leading edge digging. But the way I'm countering that is um, I'm taking it back shut, taking it back in exactly the same way, but instead of getting that squat load turn, shaft lean, all I'm trying to do is keep the lower body fairly still and just feel like I'm rotating the upper body so the club face then comes back in line with the shaft, can use the bounce, um, and it just feels a lot better. Like So when I had my lesson with Ash, we were pretty much working on um, this technique at the time, I wasn't trying to take it back shut and get into these positions, um, but he was actually saying, look, you need to keep your club face outside the hands um, and then just rotate through. So it's pretty much the same action. I'm just perhaps trying to close the face a bit more, but impact position at the end of the day is still pretty similar with um, this shot. If it sounds like I'm not excited about this, it's, uh, it's pretty early in the morning. <clears throat> I'm actually extremely excited about this. Um, I'm gonna get on my practice now, then I've got literally loads of stuff to do today. I may have like this pretty special podcast guest that I might not be able to tell you about yet because if it doesn't come off, then it's obviously gonna be a bit of a letdown, but I'm really hoping I can get them on. So I'm gonna hit some more pitches um, and just focus on that club face and then take it to the longer clubs, maybe like a seven iron, eight iron, seven iron, and then start drilling it out. So I'll start by um, spending like five, 10 minutes just getting the movement pattern correct uh, and then introduce a club, 
feel it and then again I'll be just going um, movement movement hit a ball and try and recreate it and this is what I've been telling like my online lessons as well so yeah spending a bit of time with Leon in Spain and him really like stressing how important it is to to do the dry drills um, to implement the movement pattern instead of just hitting balls to really hit home and it's helped me so much actually implement the changes that I'm trying to make so it's all good she's on the lookout at the moment uh, Daisy Daisy She's concentrating, so she doesn't usually respond. Daisy, there you go. There we go. <laughs> Look at that big dog. <laughs> Come on, say hello then. How antisocial. So basically, we're getting a push, push session in today. Um, so this is how it's going to work. If any of you guys want to do something like this at home. Um, it's really easy to do. I'm gonna come up with a few variations of pushing movements. I've decided to do like pull legs, pull, push legs as a split. Instead of doing like a full body thing each day, just cause you can focus a bit more and hit the muscle a bit harder. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. So we're starting for four sets of push-ups, and it should just go into max each set. Okay, so that was the last set of push-ups. So I did like 30, 25, 20, and whether that was like 18 or whatever. Um, now into close grip push-ups. So with those, I still like to keep the elbow fairly close to my body, slightly more healthy position for the shoulder to move. So never get like here and do these outwards ones, just puts loads of pressure on your like, rotator and just the shoulder joint in itself. So now we get like super narrow, but not like hands together because again that puts pressure on the shoulder but this is the one where you literally want the arm to just go straight past and push through the tricep so there we just finished with some tricep dips just literally hand on the edge of that um, ledge. Yeah, that's basically it for today. So just a quick one. Just trying my best not to go like backwards during this phase. Try and maintain as much body weight as possible. If not, put on a bit of body weight because I am trying to consume quite a fair amount of calories at the moment whilst continuing with this calisthenics. And to be fair, like the pool sessions, when I'm doing the bar stuff, like five sets of pull-ups, five sets of body rows, it hits you like hard. And there's, you can obviously still build muscle as long as you're in, eating in a calorie surplus whilst um, going to you know, near failure most of the time with this kind of training. So it's still working, but obviously looking forward to doing the complete golf athlete program when that comes up for sale uh, June time. So make sure you follow the Instagram because we're starting to release like the, the information about that now. Right, to finish this video, I'm just gonna talk about um, the clubs I've got in the bag now. Uh, and the changes that I'm making, because there's one change in particular, which which is a big one. So yeah, let's get into um, what clubs I'll be using this year after lockdown, but first, the state that these have got in. So these obviously rust, they're like the raw finish, um, but hitting them on the driving range, Matt has put them in a, a pretty bad state. And to be fair, the clubs just need a clean up in general. So what I'm gonna do is do like this transformation and just see how sparkly we can get these. Clean and done, looking nice, looking like some shiny clubs. Still got the uh, the rust on these. Um, I can, I do have a way of getting this rust off and making them look like brand new, but I kind of like to keep that raw look. But yeah, not a bad set, right? Let's get into this. Um, what I'm playing and what's changing. So yeah, as I was saying, we've got some big changes coming up for this year. So let me just talk through uh, what we've got in the bag so far. So. We have the Callaway. In fact, let's start right at the top. 
So firstly, we have the PM Grind, 60 degree, 12 degrees of bounce um, wedge that Callaway sent me last year. Now they sent me this as a bit of a gift after the open, hence the, uh, the shamrocks. So we use it around the greens, um, flop shots when I need to, and bunkers. Like I just always, always use it for bunker play. Next up, we have like the jaws. There we go. Lovely. Yes, yeah, so we've got the 48 with 10 in an S grind, 52 with 10 in an S, and then up to the 56 with 8, um, and that's a C grind. And to be honest, these are like the spinniest wedges I've ever played. So out in Spain on the Gecko Tour was the first time I actually used these wedges. And um, the, the greens in Spain are just very, very spinny anyway. So they're usually heavily watered, so they're soft, but they're also quick. Uh, and that's a combination for just a lot of spin. So it, so it almost got to a point where it's hard to control, but that's more down to the fact of those green conditions that you're not really going to be playing. Back here, it's perfect. You need like spinny wedges. You want to stop it, um, especially as the greens get hard and you're playing links courses. Right, next up, this is the big change. You'll be surprised to know. Let's get all of these out. So yeah, these uh, these beauties, they're going. So I've got the Apex MBs, um, by far the best looking set of irons I've ever owned or ever seen. Like, I love the raw finish, you can obviously get them in, in, uh, in chrome. The reason they're going is just because I wanna switch to the Apex Pro. Um, and that's not a forgivability. Forgivability? It's not a case of um, needing like a more forgiving club. I just need a club that's gonna go slightly more forward. Now the, the center of gravity is different on these than the Apex Pros. So the Apex Pros are gonna spin a bit less and go forward a bit more. Now because of the way I hit the ball, um, I'm fairly high speed, I spin the ball quite a lot. And it's getting to a point where um, if I'm playing into a wind, I have to club up quite a bit because I spin it a lot and the spin gets up on the wind and it's just quite hard for me to control the ball flight. So I end up having to club down quite a bit and I don't really wanna do that so much like what I learned on the Gecko Tour was that I, I need a, a bit more of a, like a stock game as such. Like I don't want to be playing around with ball flight too much. I want to so I want more of like a stock shot, number yardages, yardages down to a tee, um, and get a ball flight that isn't going to be affected too much by the wind. Now, obviously, we're gonna when you're playing at like 30 mile an hour, you're gonna have to club down. But I want about like the 10, 15 mile an hour winds that. I'm still having to club up like two and knock it down. So yeah, changing to Apex Pro is gonna get fitted for them um, as soon as lockdown's finished. So unfortunately, it's gonna be goodbye to these. Um, I'll have to speak to Callaway, see what I can do. Um, I'm not sure if they'll want them back, but if not, I'll do a giveaway because I know there's a lot of people that like these. Right, on to these two. So these both have very similar lofts. So the the UT is 18 degree, but I've bent that down to 16. Um, now the Apex is 18 degree. These both go very similar distances, but very different ball flights. So if I'm playing like a dry, fast golf course, which you need to get in play, I'll get the UT out because it's a very like flat, low ball flight. But if I'm then playing um, a parkland course, which is a bit softer, uh, perhaps a long one where I need to be hitting um, shots in from like 260 and have to get them actually stopping, then um, I'll put this in the bag. So I've got two choices here. So your linksy hard courses, and then you've got your like soft parkland courses generally. And obviously it could be a case of playing like a very tight soft parkland course, which isn't that long. And in that case, I'll put this, I'll put this one in the bag because I just liked that low, flat, almost like stingery ball flight just to keep it in play. Right, you already know what's in the bag up here. So we've got the Maverick Freewood. I mean, it's a great Freewood. I like the I like the way this one sits, slightly different to last year's, and it, it it's just a bit more accessible off the ground. Um, but yeah, again, Freewood's not really a club that I use that often. It would only be if there was like a bunker at 300 yards and I wanted to sit back just before that, I'd I'd hit a Freewood. Okay, the Maverick driver, this thing's a bit of a beast. Now I've got a Hazardous Project X 6.5, 75 gram in here at the moment. I'm thinking about possibly going to Precision Golf after lockdown and uh, getting fit for a slightly different shaft because 
obviously when you get your speed up above sort of like 120 um, it becomes very important to be fitted um, precisely precision for the right shaft and obviously because you want to spin it correctly to maximize your distance but also um, you want to reduce things like torque and stuff um, which can help that accuracy right on to my favorite club in the bag by far let me just take a minute here to uh to have a look at this let's get some nice little oh yes i mean this is the best looking putter i've ever seen um so this is the the toulon san diego or san diego which of course we all know means i've used that check before so it's got the, the stroke lab like thick grip almost like a standard thing though isn't it thick grips it used to be like i remember having a a scotty when i was like 12 and it was like the thinnest grip ever but now everyone seems to be going towards thicker grips feels really comfortable what they've actually done with this like i don't be a shit ambassador for, for not knowing but they, they do something with the shaft there's like technology in the shaft um and it makes it easier for golfers to actually um hang on i, I need to find, i need to remember what this is yeah so just as i thought and pretty much what i was going to say basically i think they may have ripped this from something that i've said in my videos before it's graphite the purpose is to redistribute the weight in a way that improves your stroke, which is pretty much what I just said. Um, it, 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 they then go on to say, which I also think is plagiarized. Um, they found that lack of success in the greens is often due to inconsistent strokes. The consistency of putting strokes needs to be addressed. Uh, so, Sean Toulon, who's the GM of Odyssey, was like, Do you know what? <coughs> The head has become so heavily in controlling it's usurped the golfer's ability to control the stroke too long continues. That's where most of this inconsistency can be traced back towards. So basically, it's it, there's like technology in the shaft which makes it easier to control the length of stroke which then makes it easier to control pace on the greens. Um, all that may not mean anything to you but what it means is it feels nice and it strokes well. So yeah, that's it. Just waiting for lockdown to finish. So then, new irons in the bag, um, and then I'm gonna find out exactly what I can play. I've applied from a PGA membership back, so I'm not sure. Um, it was looking like it was gonna be June that I start to get my PGA membership back, but now obviously it's all gonna change, so it may not be till next year that I can do it. Me and Connie are discussing possibly South Africa this winter, either that or Gecko Tour, but as soon as we're back i'm on the golf course and then we're getting competitive and playing again i cannot wait so yeah playing series back if you like this leave it a like please uh, and subscribe if you haven't and i will see you on the next one